got a new series of videos for the organic walkthrough series so this playlist all about organic nitrogen compounds and the questions on this one include questions on amines amides and nitriles as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first First question is test no knowledge of shapes of molecules and obviously the shapes dictated by the number of um, electron regions around each atom. So we'll just quickly go through this one. So carbon one has got four bonding regions around it because you've got the three bonds to the hydrogens and then this carbon carbon bond. There's no lone pairs so that's going to be tetrahedral. Number two is the same as one because you've got one, two, three, and then the bond of the hydrogen, four bonding regions, no lone pairs, so that's also tetrahedral. Carbon number three, you've got one, two, three electron regions, remember that counts as um, one region, no lone pairs around there, so that is the answer, trigonal planar, and we'll just do four for revision purposes, so we've got one, two for the hydrogens, three bonding regions but there's a lone pair on the nitrogen as well so this one here is going to be pyramidal so the answer was C moving on to the next question so a secondary amine so we want a nitrogen that's bonded to two carbon groups directly what we can't have is a nitrogen with a C double bond O next to it because then that becomes an amide so we'll run through the four of them so A, nitrogen, two carbon groups. So that is a secondary amine. This is an amide. It's actually a secondary amide. It's another amide, but this one's a tertiary amide. And the last one's an amine. The C double bond O isn't directly bonded to nitrogen. And this is a tertiary amine. So the answer was A. Next question, I've already highlighted the chiral centres. Remember, chiral centres are carbon atom with four different atoms or groups attached to it. And the thing that makes this one tricky is just remembering that there's a hydrogen here as well. So you can see on the first one, you've got the NH2, you've got the bond going to this benzene ring, you've got the bond going to this C double bond O of this um, amide group, and there's also a hydrogen on there. So there's four different things on there, likewise, these three as well so the answer was C next question which compound produces the most acidic solution well amides are basic so it's not going to be that one carboxylic acids are weak acids so it is acidic but it's just weak this one's an ester so these aren't acidic or basic so it'd be a neutral solution this one and the last one ethanoyl chloride remember acyl chloride react with water this one would produce ethanoic acid and HCl. So the presence of that HCl in, in D is going to make this the most acidic solution. So the answer was D. And the last of the multiple choice questions. So this is a secondary amide here. So how do you make those? Well, you can make them from acyl chlorides and primary amines. So this part here is going to come from ethanoyl chloride. And this part here is going to come from methyl amine. So you can see A is that combination, so that's the answer. Moving on to the main question now. So we've got our one chloropropane here, dipole across the CCL bond, and the cyanide ion is the one that's going to react with it. Obviously that's coming from the ethanolic sodium cyanide. So we need to take a curly arrow from the lone pair on the carbon of the CN- minus to that slightly positive carbon, and that will break that CCL bond by heterolytic fission. So that's going to generate these. So the organic product, we haven't asked for the name, but the organic product's called butane nitrile. And when this CCL bond breaks, obviously it picks up the electron pair from the bond and becomes a Cl- ion. So moving on to the flow chart now. So the compound in the middle box here, this is a hydroxy nitrile. Well, we've just seen a reaction where the CN group substitutes for CL. So that means compound G could be this one here. So we've just swapped the CN for a CL. That can be any halogen, by the way. So a BR, an F, or an I. 
You can also make hydroxynitriles from carbonyl compounds. So methanol was also a possible answer for compound G. We'll deal with reaction 3 next, just because it's on the screen. So how do you go from this hydroxynitrile to this hydroxy carboxylic acid? So how do you turn the CN group into a carboxylic acid group? You hydrolyze it, you react it with aqueous acid. So you could go for something like HCl aqueous, or you could just be generic and put H plus aqueous. And finally, reaction two. So the nitrile group has been turned into a CH2NH2 group. How do we do that? We react it with hydrogen in the presence of a nickel catalyst. Next part, why can compound H react with dilute hydrochloric acid? So you can see on this little diagram here, it's making a coordinate bond to the H plus ion from the acid by donating that pair of electrons on the nitrogen. So the way we'd write that is the lone pair on the nitrogen can accept an H plus ion from the acid to form a coordinate bond with the H plus, but that extra bit of detail wasn't needed for this question. Sometimes it is if it's worth a few more marks than that. So in terms of the structure of the salt, it's going to look like this because obviously the acid in question was HCl. So moving on to the next question about compound I. So that was the structure given. All I've done is reposition the OH so it makes it easier to see how the polymerization happens. So you can see we can take the hydrogen or the OH, but we'll go for the hydrogen, take the hydrogen off the OH group and therefore the OH off the carboxyl group. Obviously, they're going to form a water molecule. So if we bring the next monomer in, same thing's going to happen with that one, which is going to give us this here. Now, this um, ester bond here is ridiculously long, so I'll just sort that out. So there's the two repeat units there. So why is it biodegradable? I've already mentioned that this is an ester group. Ester groups can be hydrolyzed. Moving up to part B, so we've got the repeat unit here for nylon 6-6, the two monomers that would have formed this. So we'll just cut the join, it's joined there. So to the left hand side of that, we could have a dicarboxylic acid. So there's your first monomer, and to the right hand side of that, this would have been a diamine. Just moving back to monomer one, instead of a dicarboxylic acid, you could also use a diacyl chloride. So I've just put that there in case anybody did go for that option. And the last question, so the first thing we're going to need to do is work out the molecular formula and then the MR of the repeat unit. So the molecular formula comes out at this, C12O2N2H22. And then all we need to do is divide this MR of the um, polymer by the MR of the repeat unit, which comes out at 95.1327. I haven't bothered with the rest of the number from the calculator. So to the nearest whole number, we're talking 95.